Blackmagic Cloud for a solo creator. Hmm. Hey, what up, folks? So you've probably heard that the Blackmagic Cloud slash collaboration features in DaVinci Resolve have been out for a while, but if you're anything like me, who generally works on their own, they don't really collaborate on any projects, you've probably ignored it a little bit. I know I certainly did. But that was until recently, when I signed up to the Blackmagic Cloud. And for me, as a solo creator that doesn't really collaborate with anyone, but does hop between PCs and laptops and all that sort of stuff quite often, I'm here to tell you, it's been awesome. It's been really, really cool and really handy for me in my day-to-day -day editing. So in this video, I decided I'd just show you how it all works, how to get set up. It's really, really easy, by the way. And then talk you through the benefits and one or two of the cons. But before I do, I just need to let you know that this video is sponsored by our friends NVIDIA Studio and Box.co.uk. NVIDIA Studio is an initiative to use the RTX GPU to accelerate creative applications like DaVinci Resolve and design laptops and desktop systems that are specced to a creative professional's needs. And DaVinci Resolve uses that RTX GPU to deliver enhanced timeline performance, incredible GPU and AI-based effects, and improved rendering times. And Box.co.uk have over 1 million customers, an excellent rating on Trustpilot, and 26 years of experience selling laptops, TVs, gaming PCs, components, and now NVIDIA Studio validated laptops. So head over to Box.co.uk to browse their range of NVIDIA Studio validated laptops. Plus, you get free delivery on select products and the ability to select your own delivery window. Winner! First up, let's get the basics covered. What exactly is Blackmagic Cloud? Well, the short version is your DaVinci Resolve database, which is now known as the library. They changed the name from database to library. But anyway, it's the thing within DaVinci Resolve that actually holds all of your individual projects, but it's now in the cloud. Now remember, your projects don't actually store any of the actual media. It's purely the skeleton of the projects themselves, so it's not a particularly big file. Now this is usually stored locally on your device, whether it's your PC or laptop or whatever. But with Blackmagic Cloud, it's stored in the cloud, aka the internet. So how much does it cost? Well, it's actually just five bucks or five dollars per month per library. Now that's per library, not per project. The library can contain as many projects as you need. Now that means that this library is accessible from pretty much any device that's running DaVinci Resolve and is connected to the internet. Now the point of all this, the main benefit, the reason it was created, was so that you could work collaboratively, you could work with others on projects that are hosted in the cloud. Now for your five bucks a month, you can actually share your library with up to 10 users for free. So only the person that owns the actual library needs to pay. Let's say me, I pay my five bucks a month, and then I can invite 10 other people just to log into my library and we can work together. It is only the person that owns the library that has to pay a penny. So how do you sign up to it? Well, you can actually sign up for free. You only pay when you create the first library, but you can sign up to the cloud for free just so that you've got a cloud account and if you want to collaborate you want to work on anyone else's library you need to sign up to create your own account how do you do it let me show you so all you need to do shoot over to the blackmagic website it can literally be anywhere on the blackmagic website just go to blackmagicdesign.com and at the top you'll see this little cloud icon and it will say log in give that a click and it will take you to the blackmagic cloud website now I've already got a login, but if you haven't, you need to sign up. You simply click down here, don't have an account, sign up. And then you just need to enter your full name, email address, password, select your region, and then you sign up. As soon as you're in, you'll be taken to this screen and we've got our project server. We'll open this up. And on my left, I've got my project library. So I've actually got two at the moment. I've cleaned one of them out so I can give you a bit of a demo to see how it looks. To create your first project library, because you won't see any when you first log in, you come down to this bottom left, you create a project library, you give it a name, you choose the region, and then you click create. It's only at this point where you'll get charged your five bucks per month. So that's five bucks per library. And as mentioned, this will allow you to work collaboratively with up to 10 Blackmagic Cloud users. Now, from the creating your login, creating your library point of view, that's it, you're done. 
So all you then need to do is to connect or log into your DaVinci Resolve Cloud Library from the DaVinci Resolve application. So I've booted up DaVinci Resolve. This is my usual project manager screen. And at the top, we've got local. This is my local database, aka my local library. But then we've got network for any network installed libraries. And then we've got the cloud option. So if we give that a click, it's going to ask me to log in. So I'm going to log in with my cloud account. And straight away, I can see my project libraries. I've got my Mr. Alex Tech one, and I just create a brand new project as I usually would. I can save this, and this will automatically be saved to my cloud account. Now, I've actually got one already open, so let's open up my demo vlog. And then we just open this up, edit it, treat it like any other project. It's really quick, simple, easy, and obvious to use. It's no different, really to a general DaVinci Resolve library, except that it's in the cloud. Now I'm just gonna jump back into my project manager. It's really important to note that these projects that are stored within the cloud library, they're not stuck in the cloud library. So from here, I can right click and I can export the project and I can export the project archive. So I can always get this project out of the cloud if I need it. What I can also do, really simply, right click, copy, jump straight back over to my local library, the one that's actually installed on my physical machine at home. And then if I hit Control and V, I can paste. And that will just paste my demo vlog back into my local library. And that works both ways. If I'm currently working on a local project, I can copy it and then just paste the project within my cloud database if I want to. What about the media files? Because the actual media files, the actual video files or photos or whatever, they aren't stored in the cloud. It's just the project files that are stored in the cloud. So what do you do about those? Well, there are lots of really clever ways of moving your media files between devices if you want to. This is actually where Blackmagic's new cloud hardware also comes in, but it's not cheap and you need to buy a few of them. It's, it's quite specific to those people that are doing collaborative work. An alternative, you could use something like Dropbox. You'd probably want to create proxies, try and create smaller files that you then upload to your cloud storage, but then you are relying on uploads and downloads, and you've got the additional cost for cloud storage and all that sort of thing. So what I've been doing instead is just relying on my good old fashioned external SSD. They're cheaper in the long run than your cloud storage. They're pretty reliable. And generally these days, if you get a Type-C one, they're pretty fast. So you don't even really notice the difference whether you're editing internally on the internal SSD or externally using one of these. So let's plug this back in. And we're gonna create a new project. And let's just import some media. I'm gonna import some media directly off my little SSD. I've got some demos set up. Let's pop those in there. Drop them on the timeline and then hit save. We'll call this demo, save, and then we're just gonna jump straight out to Vinci Resolve without doing anything else. Now we're just gonna grab a laptop. We'll plug the SSD in, we'll go to cloud, we'll log in, Mr. Alex Tech, I've got demo here. I double click. It's grabbed the project from the cloud and it's got all of my media all ready to go. I can just hit play and then I can just edit this as normal. Delete whatever I want, do anything that I need to really quickly, save it, close the laptop, go back to my PC, and it's all there, ready, waiting for me to go. Now, it will also work across different versions. My PC is currently running the studio version, while my laptop is running the free version, and again, that has no problems. If you use a studio-only feature within the project, you just get the watermark popping up as you'd expect. Now, this will also work across different operating systems too, but if you are moving over to a different OS, you probably will need to rescan and relink your media. It won't be quite so seamless, but that's not too much of an issue generally. It's a quick process to relink. Now, if you're sticking to the same OS like I am here, then generally you'll be pretty good to go. What I tend to do using Windows and Windows, I'll just give my SSD the same letter on both so you never have to relink. You just plug it in, open the project, and you're good to go. If you've never done that before, it's really simple. Open Start, type in Disk Management. It comes up with this Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Sounds scary. It's honestly not. Just don't click around in here too much. Then you can find your SSD, mine's called My Passport. Right click and you change the drive letter and path. 
you can then just change this and assign the letter that you want. So any Windows laptops that I'm working on, I'll just make sure that that SSD is always set to be the H drive. So as soon as I plug it in, it will automatically find the media, the project will just work and we're good to go. I suppose the only caveat is that you need to make sure that you do have internet wherever you're going because you need to just log in to be able to pull that project down but as long as you have internet that's it now i see there being another benefit but some people may disagree with this and that is peace of mind hard drives fail it's part of life hard drives do fail computers fail laptops get broken or stolen or whatever these things do happen if the thing that's running davinci resolve gets stolen or whatever just get another one, borrow a friend or do whatever you need to do, log in, your project's there, good to go, and you just continue where you left off. Simple. Now, the same applies when it comes to upgrade time. I'm always getting people asking whether they should upgrade to the latest version, whether they should wait, whether they should back everything up, uninstall first, then reinstall, all that sort of stuff. Again, this takes the pressure off. It takes the stress out of it. You can just upgrade your DaVinci Resolve locally on your machine. If the installation, for some weird reason, balks and screws up, you can just uninstall DaVinci Resolve completely, reinstall from scratch because your projects aren't stored locally. If they're stored in the cloud, you can just grab them, download them, continue working, and off you go which is cool. Now backups are also done in the cloud too. You just simply log in and back up. And if you need to restore it, you just log into the website and then you can restore the backup as well. Now, as mentioned before, if it is a mega, super serious project that you're really worried about, you can just take a manual backup, just export the project file onto your local device or onto your external SSD. And then you know that you've got a backup in the cloud and a local hard backup as well. So it's win-win and all of that for just five bucks a month. I think it's really cool. I've been enjoying using it, so I wanted to just hop on here today, give you a real casual look at it. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below if you'll be signing up for the five bucks, whether it be for the collaborative reasons or whether you're a solo creator like me. And don't forget, if you are looking for a laptop for some DaVinci Resolve on the go, don't forget to check out box.co.uk's range of NVIDIA Studio validated laptops. There's a link down in the description below, so give it a click, have a look, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, take it easy, I'll see you next time. Bye.